and welcome to part two of our three-part video series where we're exploring a lasting decorative concrete structure. If you would have watched the first part of the video, you saw how we made the four Art Deco GFRC panels. And now what we're gonna do is get into a little bit of the installation of this entertainment space in a backyard. Uh, I'm joined here today by Kevin, who's gonna walk us through the installation process. Kevin, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good, could you just tell us a little bit of an overview of formwork, permanent formwork, please? Certainly, uh, we'll start with regular formwork. Okay. It's something that most people are familiar with that are familiar with concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, it's done in metal or wood molds cast in place. Once that concrete is cured, they'll remove those forms. Okay. With permanent formwork, it's just as it sounds. Once that concrete is cured, that those forms stay in place. Uh, think of those Lego um, foam blocks that they use. Sure. They stack on top, they interconnect, they pour the concrete inside, and once the concrete's cured, the foam stays there and acts as an insulation. Okay. A lot of those applications, uh, permanent formwork applications, though, are, are strictly utilitarian in nature. There's okay. no design aspect. So with this Art Deco project, we wanted to add a little bit of design to it, hence we're using the GFRC panels okay. for that. So the rubber form liners are typically used for decorative applications? Yeah, certainly. Okay. And most of, we have a lot of clients that use rubber form liners mm -hmm. for those wood and steel molds. But for this project, we found to be more efficient, quicker, and we could control it better by making all the cast panels here in our shop from one form liner instead of having multiple ones. I see. Okay, so I guess I understand permanent. Now let's talk a little bit about how it actually comes together. Explain to me a little bit about the overall project. Well, the overall project is a half moon shaped uh, outdoor space. Okay. We have four panels, as Adam had alluded to in the first uh, video, and those walls are 10 inches apart, and then they're ultimately gonna hold a steel structure on top being the actual pergola. Okay. So this whole entire project has to be strong, sturdy, but have the aesthetic appeal that we were looking for. Strong and sturdy like me. Yeah. No. That's okay. So <laughs> let's talk about the location for the project. Um, any site work or anything, um, any preparation prior to delivering the panels that was needed? Yeah, it was on a private residence and we, they wanted it right at the end of their manicured lawn. Okay. So where the woods began. So we did have to do some land clearing. Uh, we got to have some fun with some heavy equipment. Nice. Uh, we needed to dig the footer, uh, ran into some bees. You so, ran into some bees. Yeah, that was the only, uh, issue we had in that entire process. So I guess when someone asks you if you had any obstacles to overcome, it was a swarm of bees. A swarm of bees. Okay, I understand, <laughs> great. Um, okay, so um, the, you got rid of the bees. Uh, you're sort ready. Of. Sort of, they're still there? <laughs> yeah, I think okay. so. <laughs> uh, all right, so now you have your footers poured and you're ready to assemble the GFRC panels. Um, as mentioned in the first part of the video, they weigh around 200 pounds, so really good um, and easy for three people to work on this project. Um, so tell us a little bit about you know the installation, I guess, if you will, from there. Yeah, it was relatively simple. The trickiest part was getting those four panels to line up and maintain that same arc as we had mentioned before. We were okay. trying to maintain that half of a circle uh, for our layout. That in turn would allow us to build a square roof um, and, and maintain our design. So, okay, so now we have the panels placed and it's becoming permanent formwork. Uh, by that, I mean you're about ready to have the panels hold concrete. Um, what did you do to keep the structures from shifting? Well, as Adam alluded to, we discussed the uh, anchors and, and the concrete ties, mm -hmm. the brick ties that we'd put in the back of the panels. That allowed us to not only connect the two panels together with reinforcing wire, but also allowed us to connect to the rebar that we had cast into the footer. Okay. So at this point, we're ready to start pouring concrete? Almost. We still had, to, we needed ends so that the form wouldn't blow out. Okay. But then we also, we had these tan panels as we saw in the video, but we're casting ready mix concrete into it, which was great. So we didn't want any of that bleed water to affect the color. Okay. So we caulked all the seams and then ultimately covered the thing in plastic. Okay. So now here comes the concrete truck and yep. we're ready to pour. Um, were you concerned about blowouts and did you have any blowouts? At first we were concerned about blowouts, but we did a small scale test here in our shop with smaller panels and developed our system. Okay, so after that all cured, you were able to install the GFRC countertops. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in video three, uh, but right now let's talk about any challenges um, for the installation of the GFRC countertops. Any issues there? Um, it went relatively simple. We employed, uh, 
standard techniques in making countertops. We templated mm -hmm. uh, our design off the existing walls. Um, and we went with a cantilever design so that we could put bar stools under it. So we had a, quite a significant overhang that we had to embed uh, steel plates or install steel plates to help take up some of that um, stress. Uh, the only challenge was just making sure we had room for our J bolts. We wanted the steel pergola, since it was so heavy, to have the weight transferred down into the GFRC and then ultimately into the, the footer. Okay. So we didn't want that weight sitting on the countertop. So just lining up those holes, as you see in the video, uh, was a little bit of a challenge, but everything worked out fine. Good. So as we transition from the concrete portion, now you're ready to build. Walk me through the erection of the pergola. Well, we, like we had discussed, the whole idea was Art Deco, and we kind of wanted to go for a uh, skyscraper under construction look. So nice. we decided to go with all steel, you know, from the countertop up. Nice. So that required some custom metal fabrication. We fabricated our own steel columns. Mm -hmm. We have a reclaimed I-beam that was 30 feet long that we had to cut down to the proper size. Nice. Uh, but then we did buy some materials uh, new for the purlins and the rafters. Okay, so large I-beams, you guys were sitting out on the end with your hard hats eating your lunches. Yeah, very the iconic. Okay, good, because I, <laughs> I expect to see something like that. So, um, okay, so we got our hard hats on, we're working. How long did the assembly take? Again, this project came together very, very quickly, um, the installation process. We had the whole thing uh, with the help of a machine to ensure safety, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was all together in one day. Great. So with the final piece adding the finishing touches, any accoutrements added? Yeah, as we saw in the video, the final piece, uh, we wanted to make it an enjoyable outdoor living space. Mm -hmm. So we added some lights, some decorative accent lighting. Uh, we put concrete pavers in to kind of tie the whole look together. Okay. And then we topped it off with a, a custom grill and a fire pit. Great. So, I mean, I see why the permanent formwork concept, you know, was used for this. Um, what else is it commonly and typically used for? Well, we see it a lot in very utilitarian purposes for park seating, uh, retaining walls, things like that. But we've also seen it more yeah. in um, building, like okay. large domes, especially overseas. And even in certain locations, high rise uh, construction like skyscrapers. Great. Well, again, it, um, I was involved with the project and it's nice to be, you know, on the other side of the camera for this project. It's just an amazing concept, architectural form work. It's an amazing outdoor space. Um, I want to thank you very much for your time today. Uh, what we're going to get into in part three of this video series is actually the um, countertops, how the countertops were conceived, the edge banding, and then the installation of those countertops. So thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you in part three.